Hello and welcome to the Guide Culture YouTube channel. I am so excited to talk to you today, specifically about coming into the season of being with your friends over the holidays, maybe reconnecting with people you haven't reconnected with in a while. And you're so different, and it can feel like you want them to recognize that you're different and to talk about it. As we enter into the holiday season, like especially as an entrepreneur, you have likely been through so much. If you're anything like us, like things change within days, within a couple of weeks, and a whole year feels like sometimes a decade of growth and development and change in comparison to potentially other people in your life who are, you know, doing the same thing every day, living their same life every day, and you are kind of like on fire, right? And you can't help but want to talk about it and want to um, just like bring them into your world. And you've come to the realization that they just don't care. And the reason that I wanted to talk about this is because, well, first of all, um, I had a coaching call the other day and um, one of my students was like, I'm going to these, and she was talking about networking events and how she really wanted people to know exactly what she did and that she was different and that she was a disruptor in the industry. And it was so important for people to see her the way she saw herself. And I related so much um, because I remember back in like 2018, when I first started my business, like I couldn't wait to go to social engagements for people to ask about it. I specifically remember the holidays and thinking about how my family was going to be so curious about all the growth that I've had. And they were going to be just fascinated about this journey and be so proud of me um, for what I've done. And to my surprise, they didn't care. My family or my friends didn't care. I actually remember my childhood best friend, not only did she not ask about anything, but she unfollowed me on Instagram. Like she didn't even mute me. You know how you can mute somebody where they see that uh, they can't see, they, it shows that you follow them. You just don't see their posts. Like she literally unfollowed me. And the only reason I knew is because I was trying to send her something and her name wasn't popping up like it usually does. And it was like, wait, why isn't her name popping up? And it was like, oh, she, she doesn't follow me. And it totally devastated me, like completely devastated because it's like your friends are supposed to support you. And the best way to show support is to encourage you and talk about it. Um, and it like wrecked me for way longer than I want to admit. Um, because it, I felt embarrassed. I felt, oh, should I feel embarrassed? Is she embarrassed of me? Are other people embarrassed of me? Because I was putting myself out there. I was putting myself like in harm's way, so to speak, by posting on social media in a way that, you know, I'd never done before. And when I learned sales skills, I learned the most important principle of human nature. And that is that nobody cares about you. Truthfully, like they care about themselves, period. And so while you're wondering if people are thinking about you, they're wondering if you're thinking about them. While you're at a family holiday event, wondering if they know about your business, they're wondering if you know about their business. They're wondering if you know that they just got a promotion and wondering why you weren't asking. And what's amazing about human nature is that it is so much easier just to go with the flow of human nature than to go against it and to resist it. And once I kind of went through that season and I learned these sales skills and I learned, oh, okay, like they're not thinking about me anyway, I decided to play a game with myself. I remember journaling about it and I was like, you know what? I'm going to become so unrecognizable that they cannot help but ask. Like they cannot help but go against human nature against what their brain is naturally doing, against how they have been evolved to think, which is about themselves, they can't help but go against it that they have to ask about my business. Now, I didn't care if they did. I've just kind of decided I was emotionally unattached. Don't like literally I separated at that point, I separated my business life and then my friends and family life. And I considered them two completely different universes. Um, but I like that game of like, I'm just going to become so different that they can't help but ask. And that kind of became my message for a minute. Like, hey, when you learn how to change yourself and let content transform you, 
you become unrecognizable and you can become unrecognizable in a year. I, be- I believe that with all my heart. And that's really what I kind of told people as their message, as their future, as their vision of what was possible when they enrolled in my coaching program. And that message actually is what um, made my business partner, my now business partner originally signed up. She said, I want to be unrecognizable. And over the last seven years or so, I've kind of become, um, been able to almost put this path into a framework that I want to share with you today that will be really helpful. And a framework is really helpful because it helps you focus on a process, not the outcome. It helps you focus on playing the game, not looking at the scoreboard, right? The scoreboard is going into the holiday season and wondering who cares about me, right? Who is curious about my life? But I want you to focus on the 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 game, the practice, the the plays, the development of yourself. And then, then the scoreboard will reveal itself. It takes care of itself when you focus on the framework. So what are the best things you can do, step one, is to thrust yourself into challenges. Now, what is a challenge? A challenge could be very much like a a program, like the 75 hard, 75, yeah, 75 hard challenge is a challenge. I know challenges of like running challenges, right? Couch to 5K, couch to marathon challenges. Um, A goal can be a challenge. I know our goal was to do over, you know, 2 million this year. That's a challenge, right? And a challenge is anything that feels like it might be difficult to do, that kind of pushes you to a different um, identity. And if you look up the definition of the word challenge, it literally means a duel. D-U-A-L, a duel, a kind of uh, almost like a things against each other. And when I really started to think about that word, I was like, wow, like that's exactly what a challenge is because it's a duel between your identity right now and your potential identity in the future. And the only thing that's in this gap is this action, is this mindset, is this ability to become your future self today. And what's crazy about your brain is your brain just loves to think the same thoughts. It loves to do the same things. It loves to drive the same way home from work every day. It loves to have the same morning routine because it's really efficient that way. When you think the same thoughts over and over and over again, your brain says, ah, this is the temperature that I like to be at. I want you to think like a thermostat. When the temperature goes up or down, your brain says, this isn't comfortable. Let's get back to what we know. So when you thrust yourself into a challenge, you're at this thermostat and you're asking yourself to raise the temperature a little bit higher, a little bit lower. And your brain is like, this isn't us. This isn't who we are. This isn't what we do. Get back to a comfortable temperature. And I want you to think about yourself kind of like as an identity, right? Like like that, that present identity versus the future identity. When you are an identity, that reflects what you do. For example, If you were to say, I'm a runner, like if you were to identify somebody that is a runner, what do runners do? They run. That is naturally what they do. What if you say, I'm a writer? What do writers do? They write. It's like a byproduct of who they are. Now, what if you were put yourself into a challenge, right? This couch to marathon, and you were to identify yourself as someone that is trying to run. I'm trying to, it sounds so sweet and innocent and pure. It's like, oh, she's like putting herself up to something, you know, different. Bless her heart. She's trying. What is someone who identifies as someone that is trying to be a runner? What do they do? They negotiate if they should run today. They make running feel really hard. They kind of maybe tell stories about running and how this is like not what they want to do, but they have to do it because they're putting themselves in this challenge. They might run, they might not, right? Even just the word try sets you up to say, I might run or I might not run. But runners are like, oh, this is just what I do. When you identify as a runner, you actually feel more uncomfortable not running at your usual time than running at your usual time. So this process of becoming, right, this present identity to this future identity is so uncomfortable because your brain likes to stay at the same temperature and you are pushing it and saying, hey, we're going to get to a new baseline and it's going to cause critical, or excuse me, it's going to cause mental discomfort. Now, over time, 
over time, your brain will kind of settle in, but that goes into the second part of this framework, which is to allow it to work on you so that it can work for you. This process of a challenge that you thrust yourself in, you were transforming. Remember, we're saying, hey, transform yourself and become unrecognizable by changing your identity, by changing who you are. Well, in order to do that, it's going to be hard and it's not going to feel like it's working. And so I just want to encourage you, and this is the second point, is to allow the hard work to work on you before it can work for you. So I completed 75 hard. I completed it in October. And for the first, I would say 25 to 30 days, it was like so mentally uncomfortable. I say mentally because the actions, like if you think about the actions, it's um, it's 75 days of a gallon of water, two 45-minute workouts, one of which had to be outside, reading 10 pages a day, following a diet, taking a progress picture, and then no alcohol was the, was the other one. And um, the first 30 days was like, this is not like who I am. And I never knew that, that my habits had this grip on me until I did 75 hard. And my thoughts, like I want you to think about these like mental models. One of the best ways to transform yourself is to notice other successful people's mental models and notice what your mental model is. Like, how do you think about things? And I, I realized like, oh, the way I used to think about um, like little, like I would have like a little treat after dinner at night, right? Even just like a couple little chocolate chips. It's like so innocent. It's just no big deal. Like, it's fine. This is normal to like want a little something sweet. And and I would realize, oh, there's my mental model that thinks it's no big deal. Whenever I would go into my second workout, I'm, I would think like, oh, this is so unnecessary. Like, I'm already pretty fit. I'm fit enough. Like, it sounds so innocent, sounds so pure, sounds so not a big deal. But that is the thought, that is the mental model that was honestly keeping me from a lot of goals outside of the 75 hard challenge, but really revealed itself through the 75 hard challenge. And what's crazy is that after this 30 day mark, I remember feeling a sense of locking in and it honestly did feel like a light switch. Like it wasn't super overnight, but it it was a moment when, um, when I was at a birthday dinner and someone just started pouring me a glass of wine. And I remember thinking, oh, who is this for? Like I didn't, I wasn't super public about doing 75 hard in the time in, during the, during the, the actual 75 days. Cause I just wanted to like be in it, you know, and not really think about the outer world. I just want to be in it with myself. And so this person pouring me a glass of wine didn't know that I was doing it. And my thought was, who is that for? That's not mine. Whereas before, like even just a couple of days before, I would have had been like resisting it. Like, I can't have this. Like, I'm going to have to wait until after 75 hard. Oh, this is so annoying. Like, this isn't as fun. Um, everybody else is drinking. I'm not drinking. Like, all those thoughts would have kind of entered my head. And this new mental model kind of locked in of like, oh, that's not who I am. That's not what I do. Who is that for? And it was just the crazy experience experience of this transformed person, this new identity who did not identify with a glass of wine at a social event anymore. What? I experienced it again um, at the grocery store. I was um, getting my like usual stuff, but my son was um, going on a trip to, with his grandparents for just like a few days. And so I wanted to get some quick, easy snacks. Um, and usually I try to do like refrigerated stuff for his snacks, but he was going to be on a long drive and I wanted to have some options. So I got like pretzels and the crackers and stuff I don't usually get, but I was like, you know, it's whatever. But I walked away from my buggy and I came back looking for it. And I remember looking in the buggy and thinking like, whose buggy is that? That's not ours. Like we, like I would never buy that stuff. That's not who I am. I don't identify with that buggy. And that moment I was like, oh, I have transformed to a different identity. And what's interesting is I've seen a lot of people do 75 hard all the way through. And then they, they like will gain a bunch of weight and kind of go overboard the opposite direction. And it's because their mental model has not caught up with the actions that they took. And I think my my framework right here of transforming yourself really, really supported the 75 hard um, kind of results and also the habits of like realizing that I didn't have to resist this identity, but I could become this identity. And this was around day 30. And I remember thinking, oh, 75 hard is as good as done. I just got to settle in now. It was like, Definit- you know, people will go through 75 hard, like wondering if they'll make it all the way through. And I was like, oh, I, it was, it felt like I'd placed an Amazon order and it was out of stock. 
So I had to wait a little bit longer to get it, but I knew it was coming because the order had already been placed. And when it showed up at my doorstep, it'd be like, oh, cool. Right. Like I wasn't resisting and wondering when I could like, you know, not have to be on a diet or not have to not drink. I just was like, oh, it's just as good as done. I'm settling in. And that's when I knew the identity had changed. Like I was different. And I remember going to in the middle of 75 hard, I was close to the end, but I went to a um, field trip for my son, a fall field trip. We went to a farm and of course my mom friends were there. And um, I remember when the mom friends was like, man, you, she said, you seem so different. You seem so focused is what she said. And I just said, yes, I'm super focused. And I was like, oh, wow, that, that was the moment right there where it showed, the scoreboard showed. And what's crazy is like, I didn't even care about the f- scoreboard in that moment. I was just like, oh, back to the game, back to the game. And then when you allow, this is step three, when you allow the work to work on you, it transforms you and then it works for you. And then it works for you. So what's crazy is like through 75 hard challenge, and you can do any kind of challenge, right? I just came off of 75 hard. So I'm just like really reflecting like what it's done for me. But it's like the challenge worked on me, right? It changed me. And now I'm that that new identity. So now it can work for me. I think people think about a challenge as like when the deadline is done or the goal is hit, then you back off, then you step away. And you say, oh, it's finished. Instead of thinking about, wow, this is actually how I function in life now. Now it works for me. 75 hard challenge didn't work for me during it. It worked for me today. And so with that mindset, I think what's really helpful is to actually just let it be hard. I see a lot of times things feel hard for people and my students especially. And they'll be quick to message us, right? Get on Slack or Voxer and have all these questions to try to relieve the discomfort, to try to allow it to not be as hard to find the answers. And what's crazy is like, I could give a lot of answers and I honestly do. I give a lot of insight and examples, especially like for content and sales messages. And what about this pivot? What about this angle? I would say that is like my gift is like to see someone's situation and be able to offer different sales messages for it. The problem is that it doesn't change them, right? It relieves the hardness in the moment and it gives them kind of like a little bit of a bone, but it doesn't transform them. Like I have been transformed. And so now all this stuff can work for me. And, you know, over the last five years have been extremely difficult in business of being transformed. Like 75 hard is just 75 days. But with business, sometimes it's decades of transforming you until you become this different identity. And that's okay. That's amazing. That's the point, right? This is the point. And I just really want to emphasize that because I think people think about like, I'm just working until it lets up when really this pressure and things that feel hard and uncomfortable that's where you want to live. And it's crazy because you think, oh, I don't want to live in discomfort, but I can guarantee it's also very uncomfortable to stay exactly where you are today. I just had a conversation with a friend yesterday and she was, she's kept saying like, I'm trying to be thankful with my progress. Like I want more, but I don't want to want more. I want to be like comfortable where I am. And I said, Hey, it is going to be so uncomfortable. You're going to, to like fight to stay where you are. It's also going to be uncomfortable to fight, to grow. It's uncomfortable both ways. You just pick the, un- the discomfort that you want right? And then there's comfort on the other side. It's 50-50, both scenarios, but just be okay with the discomfort. That is so huge. And then when you get kind of really good at being uncomfortable, it actually becomes like a mastery process of you being uncomfortable, mastering something that you're working towards to be uncomfortable. And then it becomes second nature. And I see a lot of times people will invest in a lot of things, right? They invest in programs, they invest in coaching, and they don't even allow it to really transform them because they resist and avoid the hard. They try to get it to be released and relieved from them. They think show, uh, you know, signing up for a coaching program will release the tension and the pressure and the burn. But what happens is when you release that, you don't even put yourself in a place to be able to master it. And then all of a sudden you have all these programs and all these things that you invested in that's just lack of mastery stacked on top of lack of mastery stacked on top of lack of mastery. And unless you can do something as efficiently and as elegant as tying your shoes, it has not been mastered yet. And I will tell you, the only thing that makes anything worse is by stacking on another layer of lack of mastery on top of the last one. 
It just crumbles you. It doesn't support you. It crushes your spirit. It makes you frustrated and it just makes you stay stagnant and worst of all, slide down on your transformation journey. And I want you to think about things that like have been hard, right? Like even something as simple as learning to do a webinar. I've done probably 50 webinars, more than that, I'm sure. Um, and it, I remember those first probably 10, 20 were so painful. They're so hard. There's so much work. It's so much effort. And over time, they started to become fun and enjoyable and easy. Of course, a little bit of discomfort, but just like second nature. And if you don't push through that hard, if you just tap out and say, oh, this isn't for me, never mind, you'll never experience mastery. And then it's just frustration on top of frustration on top of frustration. And that's what causes burnout. And that's what causes people to quit. I just don't want that for you. So just to recap, you really becoming a new identity, it really requires you to thrust yourself into challenges, new environments, be with new people, experience hard work, experience hard things that you haven't mastered yet and let it be hard. Because on that journey of it being hard, you will develop mastery and then it can work for you. It's got to work on you before it works for you. And when you become that new identity, you won't believe this. You're going to walk into the holiday season. You're going to walk into events and you're going to bump into people and you won't even think about them asking about you and your business because I can guarantee the future you does not think about who's thinking about you. It's so funny because in 2018, it would like wrecked me. And now a future me, $20 million Macy, it does not even cross my mind. Not even for a second not even for a second. And so your journey to transform so that the scoreboard shows up, you will get to a place where that scoreboard doesn't even matter to you because you love the game so much and you're loving who you become from it. I hope this was helpful. Um, I hope you enjoyed your Thanksgiving. This is being filmed live uh, right after Thanksgiving. And um, as you go into like new, you know, I'm sure your Christmas holidays stuff is already starting. I know my calendar is very much so booking up. I want you to think about thinking about other people and just asking them a ton of questions and learning so much about them and learning stories about them. That is one of the best things you can do to become a different salesperson is to challenge yourself. Hello, challenge to ask questions about other people, be insanely curious and interested in them. And I can almost guarantee that you will be a different person coming out of this holiday season. I hope this was helpful. I really loved sharing this with you and I will see you on the next one.